Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and today, finally, I will be sharing with you guys kung ano nga ba ang salary ng isang Emirates flight attendant. Magkano nga ba? 30k, 50k, 80k, 100, 150, 200 nga ba? Well, let's find out in 3, 2, 1... From what I found out through other YouTube channels, YouTube ba talaga or YouTube? Anyway, <laughs> um, salary ng isang flight attendant here in the Philippines. So I'm sure there are two airlines na may isip niyo agad. Yung isa na yellow ang uniform and yung isa na flag carrier ng Philippines, right? So if you decide to work for these airlines, based sa research ko ha, based sa research ko, you will earn about 50 to 70,000 pesos. And if senior ka na, you can earn up to 100,000 pesos doon sa flag carrier na airline. Ang hindi lang ako sure is if yung amount na yon na deduct na yung tax because I know that here in the Philippines, syempre may bawas yung sweldo nyo because of tax. So kung hindi pa kasama ang tax deduction doon, mas mababa pa ang I think ha, I think. So yun ang hindi na clarify sa videos na napanood ko if yung 50 to 70k na amount nabawasan na ba yun ng tax or babawasan pa ba ng tax so i'm not really sure guys now now if you decide to work for a middle eastern airline like my old company emirates then buckle up because you are not gonna believe how much you can earn even if less than a year ka pa sa company. So, super important. Let's establish na your salary will be in dirhams. So, that's the currency of UAE. And, of course, kailangan based kayo in Dubai. Para mas mabilis and mas madali nyo maintindihan, I will convert the amount to Philippine Peso. Also, guys, I will focus on the starting salary, ha? Kasi, guys, ako, um, six, oh, actually, seven years. So, seven years akong first-class flight attendant. Ah, oh, social. <laughs> so, of course, the higher your rank, the more senior you are, the higher your salary. I'm sure, ganun din naman dito sa Philippines, right? The higher your position, Mas mataas ang sweldo mo. So I'm not gonna talk about my salary as a first class flight attendant na 12 years flying. We are gonna talk about the starting salary because of course, when you join Emirates, you are gonna start in economy. So yun yung starting position mo as a flight attendant for Emirates. And then, you are gonna work your way up to business class. And then, work your way up to first. So, kailangan mo mag-apply. Tapos, hindi pa yan sigurado. Some people get rejected. Magsustay pa sila in economy for one more year. Or magsustay pa sila in business for one more year before maging first class. And then, after first class, pwede ka maging supervisor. Again, kailangan mo mag-apply. It doesn't mean na pag nag-apply ka, tanggap ka na kagad. A lot of people get rejected. Tapos, pag naging cabin supervisor ka na, then, pwede ka mag-apply to become a purser. So, of course, pag purser ka, talagang super taas na ng salary mo. My goal, the goal talaga was to become a first-class flight attendant. Yun lang talaga yung goal ko. Ayoko maging senior. Grabbing responsibility yon. Kahit malaki yung sweldo, I just didn't want to stress myself out. Kasi, syempre, mas maraming responsibilities. So, super happy na ako na... First class flight attendant ako. Okay? So, let's make it clear na sa vlog na to, I will talk about the salary of an economy crew. So, are you ready? Let's start. But wait! Okay, so, di ba sinabi ko kanina na ang currency ng sweldo um, in dirhams? So, one dirham right now is around 30.8 pesos. 
So lahat ng amount in dirhams na i-mention ko, we are going to convert it to Philippine peso gamit ang 13.8 na exchange rate. Okay? Pwede naman natin gawing 13.5. Okay? So why not? Gawin natin 13.5. Okay? We are gonna start with the basic salary. So yung basic salary, kahit magkasakit ka at hindi ka makalipad for a few days, hindi yan mababawasan. Automatic na part yan ng sweldo mo every month. So, ang basic salary ng isang economy crew in Emirates is 4,260 dirhams. In peso, it's 57,510 pesos. So, basic salary mo yan. Again, automatic part na yan ng sweldo mo every month. Basic pa lang yan, okay? Next, aside from your basic salary, meron kang hourly rate or rate per hour. So, ibig sabihin, kada oras na nagtatrabaho ka, bayad ka. <laughs> Guys, totoo talaga na yung midli mo on board, bayad yun. Every hour na nasa aeroplano ka, bayad. <laughs> Super spoiled, I know. Yung hourly rate na yon, dito lumalaki ang sweldo ng mga flight attendants. Take note guys, Emirates is one of the top airlines in the world. So it is a busy airline. When I was still flying, it came to a point na ang flying hours ko every month, more than 100. Yes, more than 100 hours. Let's say ang tinrabaho mo this month, 80 hours. So, ang rate per hour ng isang economy crew is... 61 dirhams and 25 fills. Yes, fills yung kanalang centavo. So, in peso, it's 826 pesos and 87 cents per hour. So, going na lang nating 827. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, kada oras na nagtatrabaho ka, you are earning. 827 pesos. So, i-compute natin kung meron kang 80 hours per month, ang kinita mo from flying is 66,160 pesos. So now, i-add natin ang ating basic salary and ang kinita natin sa flying hours. Ang kinita mo that month 123,670 pesos. Now, on top of the basic salary and your hourly rate, oh, uh -huh. but wait, <laughs> there's more! <laughs> so, on board, if you are the duty free operator, alam niyo yung mga magazines sa seat pockets. Diba pa na browse kayo sa magazines? May mga merch sila. Meron silang travel stuff. Merong, I think, I think yun sa yellow airline. Meron silang blankets. Meron silang pillows. My meals, right? So, sa Emirates, meron din ganon. Merong makeup, may perfume. So, so if ikaw ang in charge sa duty free for that flight, if may bumili sa yo, you get 10% commission. Actually, it's our favorite position ko back when I was still a flight attendant. Medyo effort because it's extra work. Tapos na magtrabaho yung ibang FA. Ang dami mo pang kailangan gawin as the duty-free operator. Kailangan mong bilangin yung stock mo. Kailangan mo pa pumunta sa cabin para magbenta. But then again, sa rin naman mapupunta yung commission. So it makes sense. Extra work, extra pay. There are flights na super lakas ng benta sa duty free. I'm not kidding, guys. As soon as the passengers get on board, they're like, I want this, I want this, I wanna buy this, I wanna buy this. And you have to tell them, no. okay, sir, as soon as the service is over, we are gonna give you the product. And there are flights naman na talagang walang benta. So again, conservative lang ang example na ibibigay ko sa vlog na to. So let's say, in total, you sold 14,000 pesos sa duty-free the whole month. So that means, you get 
1,400 pesos sa sweldo mo. Again, conservative lang yan. I know a lot of crew na kinakarir ang duty-free every single flight. And trust me, ang commission nila halos the same sa basic salary nila. So, if we are gonna add our basic salary, our flying hours, and yung ating duty-free commission, ang total is 125,070 pesos. Next! O, oh, diba? Meron pa! Sabi ko sa inyo eh, there's more! Okay, so next, layover allowance. So, pag may layover, ibig sabihin mag-overnight kayo sa city na yon. Now, ang layover allowance, hindi siya fixed amount na every layover, ito ang amount na matatanggap mo. Hindi rin siya fixed amount na kasama siya sa sweldo mo. It's money na nakukuha mo when you check in sa hotel. So, pag check in mo, meron kang key card and then meron kang envelope. Ang arte. Super arte. So, meron kang envelope and andun yung money. So, it really depends on the city na pupuntahan mo because some cities are more expensive than others. For example, Luanda, Geneva, Oslo. So, when you go to these places, medyo malaki ang layover allowance. Talawang laki ng ngiti ko pagkasabi ko, medyo malaki. <laughs> Halatang yun ang binibid ko before nung flight attendant pa ako. <laughs> so, yung layover allowance sa mga cities na yon, around 500 dirhams or more. Roughly 6,750 pesos for your 24-hour stay in that city. O, diba? Now, paminsan pa nga, more than 24 hours ang stay mo in those cities. So, yung amount na yon magiging times 2, magiging times 3, depende kung, kung how many days nga yung layover mo. So, let's say 2 days, magiging times 2, pag 3 days, times 3. Actually, yun ang ginagawa ng mga wais na crew. They would bid for these flights, na mataas ang layover allowance, and then save all the money. So, paano nila sina save yung money na yun? Di ba sila kumakain? Mamaya, pag-uusapan natin yan. Now, if it's not an expensive city, the layover allowance is around 200 dirhams. Let's just say, conservative to again, guys, ha? So, let's just say 200 dirhams to 300 dirhams, which is... 2,700 pesos to mga 4,000 pesos. So let's say you have 5 layovers in a month. Huwag natin gamitin example yung mataas na layover allowance kasi um, syempre, economy crew pa kayo, baka hindi nyo makuha yung flights na binibid nyo. So gamitin natin yung 2,700 na layover allowance muna, okay? So, if you get 5 layovers in a month, and each layover my 2,700 pesos na allowance, so, ang total nun is 13,500 pesos. Again, guys, depende yan sa layover nyo. We just use yung amount na 2,700 Pwede kayong makakuha ng layover sa Geneva. Pwede kayong makakuha ng layover na mas mataas sa 2,700 ang allowance. Again, ginawa ko lang to example. Para naman mas realistic na, syempre, di ba, what if yung flights na makuha mo, hindi ganun kataas yung allowance. So, if we are gonna add all that, basic, flying hours, duty-free, layover allowance, ang total natin for now, is 138,570 pesos. Now, believe it or not, ang dami kong kakilala na crew na ang laki ng savings nila because they save every cent of their layover allowance. Kasi ako, I'll be honest, medyo magastos ako. Like, I love room service. So, talagang ko magastos ako sa room service. Talagang nag-shopping ako every layover. But, meron talagang mga wais na ang galing nilang mag-save. Pero, isipin mo, paano nila ginagawa yun? Di ba sila kumakain? 
Well, guess what, guys? Ang galing nila. So, nalaman ko na nagbabaon sila ng food. Yes! Actually, guys, eventually, ginaya ko na rin sila. Yes, as in baon na parang grade school. Nagbabaon sila ng salad, nagbabaon sila ng rice, nagbabaon sila ng canned tuna, instant noodles, crackers, chocolates, etc., etc. So, pag nagutom sila, they no longer have to order room service or go out and look for a restaurant near the hotel kasi ang dami na nilang food sa suitcase nila. Super wise, di ba? So, yung layover allowance nila the whole month, buong-buo sa kanila walang nabawas. Ang galing, di ba? Eventually, ginawa ko rin yun because for example, um, Kasi guys, ni naman sekreto, mahilig ako sa pancit canton. So, magubaw na ako ng yakisoba, yung spicy chicken, yung blue. <laughs> so, meron na ako dun sa, sa, ano yan, sa suitcase ko. Meron akong sky flakes. Meron kasing times na, alam mo yun, 1 or 2 a.m. You're hungry, but hindi ka ganun ka gutom na kaya mong makaubos ng isang sandwich. So, instead of ordering room service, Sky Flakes na lang. Guys, hindi naman mahal ang room service because may discount for us crew. Yes, that's why I love room service kasi discounted for us crew. For example, diet din ako. So, nagbabahan ako ng canned tuna. Kasi paminsan, super tempting to order everything sa room service. <laughs> Alam niyo naman ako, hindi ako. So, oh, pag nagda-diet ako noon, better na pagkan tuna na lang ako. So, may times na nasa-save ko rin yung buong allowance ko. O, oh, ba Para-paraan lang yan. Now, you might be thinking na, yes, malaki nga ang sweldo mo. Kaso, gagastos ka sa apartment. Kasi, syempre, hindi ka naman nakatira sa Dubai. Guys, you don't have to worry about your accommodation in Dubai because Emirates ang bahala sa inyo. I am not kidding, guys. 12 years ago, I still remember my apartment hotel. Kasi pagdating ka sa Dubai, doon ako hinatid. Super bongga talaga ng apartment hotel na yun. Talaga, <gasps> this is the life! So, guys, pag naging crew kayo for Emirates, you don't have to worry about your accommodation because Emirates will take care of you. Promise kin sa inyo, totoo talaga yan. The company owns so many condos in Dubai. Walang biro. Sobrang dami talaga. Kumbaga yung condo na yon na puro crew, it's called crew accommodation. Ayoko naman sabihin na sikat, but people can't help but see na, ah, crew accommodation yan because lahat ng lumalabas sa building na yon naka Emirates uniform. So, kumbaga, alam na ng mga taxi drivers na, ah, the crew accommodation. So, sobrang dami talaga, guys, sa Dubai. So, trust me when I tell you na, literal, wala kang babayaran na rent, water bill, electricity bill. You don't have to worry about anything. Believe it or not, Emirates lahat ang magbabayad niyan. Sa apartment mo, you already have Everything that you are gonna need. My bed, my couch, my dining table, my fridge, my washing machine. Meron ka pang welcome pack, yung plates mo, pots, pans. Lahat covered ng Emirates, okay? Spoiled, di ba? I'm telling you guys, pag naging Emirates crew ka, super spoiled ka. Usually, ang condos ng Emirates, um, two-bedroom condo or three-bedroom. So, you are going to live with fellow crew. Yung apartment hotel ko, ang flatmate ko from Serbia. Guys, you don't have to worry about anything. Siyempre naman hindi kayo same bedroom. Separate bedroom kayo. Siyempre mag-share kayo sa kitchen. But guys, it's such a big apartment na, my gosh, talaga you are gonna feel na super spoiled kayo. The only thing na babayaran nyo the need, ha? Need to. Is your Wi-Fi connection. <laughs> Kasi, di ba? Need na siya these days, eh. Hindi libre ang Wi-Fi. Yes, kayo ang kailangan magpabit ng Wi-Fi sa apartment nyo. And the same with your data plan. So, it's not covered ng Emirates, guys. But, 
Guys, sa sweldo nyo na to, I'm sure afford nyo magpakabit ng Wi-Fi and to get a really good data plan. Now, if you are worried about your transportation, paano yan pag may work ako? Baka magastos ang transportation, guys. Don't worry. Again, Emirates ang bahala sa inyo. They have company buses every 20 minutes sa lahat ng crew accommodation. So, super sikat yan, guys. Like, sa Dubai, makikita nyo na my Emirates na bus and it's strictly for crew accommodation. So, for example, my crew accommodation sa, sa Mall of Asia. <laughs> Para lang maintindihan nyo. So, merong crew accommodation sa Makati. My crew accommodation sa QC. Yung buses ng Emirates, merong in charge na i-pick up yung crew sa area ng Mall of Asia. Merong in charge na i-pick up yung crew sa QC area. Merong in charge na i-pick up ang crew sa Makati. So guys, hindi nyo kailangan mag-worry about transpo because again, covered kayo ng Emirates. It's free! Hindi nyo kailangan magbayad. So, one hour before your check-in time, punta ka na sa lobby. Yung lobby ng every crew accommodation, syempre maraming couch yan kasi you're gonna have to wait for the bus. Ang daming crew na naka-uniform, tapos bit-bit yung cabin bags, yung suitcases nila, waiting for the bus. Now, if you are married, you do have the option to leave the company accommodation and live in an apartment of your choosing. Yes, pwede yun. Siyempre, if yung husband mo nasa Dubai and you wanna live together, hindi naman pwede na yung husband mo makikitara sa crew accommodation. Bawal yun! Ang crew accommodation strictly for flight attendants only. So, if you are married, on top of your basic salary, your hourly rate, your duty-free commission, your layover allowance, you will also get an accommodation allowance, which is 4,150 dirhams, which is roughly 56,000 pesos per month. Per month yan ha, yung 56 na yan. Also, aside from that, my transportation allowance ka rin. Kasi syempre, wala ka na sa crew accommodation. So, hindi ka na pwedeng kumamit ng crew transpo. So, bibigyan ka nila ng transportation allowance, which is 485 dirhams or 6,547 pesos and 50 cents. Again, every month yan. Now, ang ginagawa ng mga married crew, and I will admit, yun talaga ang ginawa ko ever since I got married. <laughs> Instead of renting my own apartment, gastosin ko yung buong accommodation allowance ko, I decided to rent an apartment with my friends kasi mas mura. <laughs> Honestly guys, it was one of the best decisions kasi yung mga friends ko, married din sila. And yung mga husbands namin, Nasa Philippines. So perfect talaga to live together kasi married na kami tatlo. So hindi na kami masyado ma party. If ever ma party kami, medyo, medyo tita party na. <laughs> so one of the best decisions talaga yun. We rented a three bedroom apartment sa Sheikh Zayed Road. Yung area na yun, parang Times Square ng New York City. That's where all the action is. So let's just say sa accommodation allowance ko every month, I was only spending mga, mga 33 or 34. So the rest, savings ko na. <laughs> but then again guys, there's a huge difference sa crew accommodation and having your own apartment in Dubai. This time, hindi na libre ang water, hindi na libre ang electricity. So yung amount na na-save ko, mababawasan pa rin because of course, kailangan mong bayaran yung water bill, kailangan mong bayaran yung electricity bill. Also, yung ni-rent namin apartment, hindi siya furnished. So syempre, kailangan pa namin bumili ng washing machine, kailangan pa bumili ng fridge, kailangan pa bumili ng bed, couch, dining table, lahat ng kailangan sa bahay, kailangan namin bilhin. 
because again, hindi nga furnished yung apartment namin. So lahat yon out of our own pockets na yon. So medyo magastos talaga the first few months after we left the crew accommodation kasi syempre dami kailangan bilhin. But after that, medyo malaki yung savings. <laughs> so yun ang difference pag married ka and nag-decide ka na umalis ng company accommodation. You guys have the option ha, let's say married ka tapos yung husband mo nasa Philippines. You don't have to leave the crew accommodation. It's really up to you if you want to leave the crew accommodation or if you want to stay. Hindi ka na nila pipilitin. But then again nga, because my friends ako na lahat kami married, nag-decide kami na, you know what? Why don't we live together? Parang alam mo yung movies lang na, you know, you're in a foreign city, tapos you live with friends. So, basta na kami may experience yun. And not to mention na, yun nga, malaki nga yung mas safe namin if ganun ang gagawin namin. So, super happy kami with our decision. I know some crew na married sila, but gusto nila sa company accommodation pa rin sila kasi wala naman yung husband nila sa Dubai. So, pwedeng-pwede talaga magstay sa crew accommodation kahit married ka na. No problem at all. So, in summary, basic salary, flying hours, duty-free commission, layover allowance, and should you decide to leave crew accommodation and rent your own apartment, you will get this. That's just the conservative amount. If you have more flying hours, if you get more commissions on duty free, if you get more layovers in expensive cities, of course, mas mataas ang sweldo nyo. And the most important thing that you should remember is walang tax sa Dubai. Yes! Sa Dubai, yung sweldo na yan, buong buo sa yo. Walang bawas ni isang sentimo. <laughs> that is probably one of the best things about being a flight attendant for Emirates. If you think about it, super generous ng Emirates. All your basic needs as a flight attendant covered na nila, except of course yung Wi-Fi and yung data. <laughs> So guys, you don't have to worry about spending so much if you are going to be based in Dubai. Because trust me when I tell you, Emirates will take care of you. Is Dubai an expensive city? Yes, medyo. But if you think about it, ano na lang ba ang gagastusan mo sa Dubai aside from your Wi-Fi and your data plan? Sabihin natin groceries. Of course, kailangan yung kumain, di ba, during your days off. Pang lakwacha, mauling, outing with friends. So, really, wala ka na masyadong kagastasan kasi you don't have to pay for rent, you don't have to pay for your transportation to work. Ang gagastasan nyo lang talaga, food nyo, personal stuff na lang, shopping. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, spoiled kayo pag naging flight attendant kayo for Emirates. Almost everything is paid for by the company. And I speak from experience, ah. Hindi lang to research. It's something na pinagdaanan ko talaga for 12 years. So everything that I discussed sa vlog na to, that's the salary of an economy crew. Meaning, your first few years in the company. I was an economy crew for two years and eight months. Ah, <laughs> lala ko talaga. Once you become a business class crew, tataas ang basic salary nyo, tataas ang rate nyo per hour. The same pag, syempre, naging first class crew kayo, tataas ulit yun. Pati yung rate nyo per hour, tataas. Hindi pa dun kasali kapag may bonus every year na, di ba dito sa Philippines, may, ano yun, 13th month? Wala kaming ganon. Walang ganon sa Dubai. But ang meron is may increase sa basic may increase sa rate per hour. Every, well, depende. Depende sa business, of course. May years na wala kami increase kasi nga, hindi ganun kalakas. But then, meron talagang times na sobrang successful ng Emirates na 
may bonus. Yung bonus na, guys, ang bonus na binibigay ng Emirates. <laughs> Basta, the year that I joined, ang joke nila at that time, kasi sobrang laki ng bonus, ang joke was, everybody had a Rolex after no bonus. Talagang yun yung joke. Everybody had a Rolex. So, wala kaming 13th month pay, but meron kaming bonus. Ganun. So, super saya talaga nun yung pag nakita mo yung bonus mo on top of your salary. You're like, oh my God! <laughs> Tapos, pag naging cabin supervisor kayo, again, tataas ulit ang rate nyo per hour, tataas ang basic, tataas din yung accommodation allowance nyo. Yes! Yes! Pag supervisor na kayo or pag purser na kayo, mas mataas lahat. Higher basic, higher hourly rate, higher accommodation allowance, and pag purser kayo, tapos married na kayo and may anak na kayo, Emirates will help you sa tuition fee ng anak niyo. So you see guys, I'm not kidding. Super spoiled kayo pag naging flight attendant kayo for Emirates. So, ang question niyo, alam ko paano tanong niyo eh. How much nga ba ang salary ko after being an Emirates flight attendant for 12 years? Magkano nga ba ang sweldo ko bilang 12 years ako sa Emirates and 7 years ako sa first class. Wow! Secret! <laughs> but, but, I hope I gave you guys an idea how much you guys can earn should you decide to apply for Emirates and become an international flight attendant. Marami sa inyo na ang pangarap yung yellow uniform, marami sa inyo na ang pangarap yung flag carrier na airline. But, if gusto nyo maging flight attendant for a Middle Eastern airline like Emirates, soon, I will vlog about the requirements. Ano nga ba ang height requirement? Pwede ba to? Bawal ba to? Bawal po ba may piercing? Paano po pa ganito? Guys, I will answer all your questions and sasabihin ko sa inyo lahat ko ano ang requirements ng Emirates and also kung saan kayo mag-a-apply. So, super important yun, right? Because guys, COVID is almost over. And like what I said kanina, Emirates is one of the top airlines in the world. So for sure, for sure, magiging busy sila kaagad and they're gonna need more and more flight attendants. So if you wanna know kung saan kayo mag-apply, stay tuned because I will be sharing it on my next vlog. Kaya don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you'll be updated whenever I have a new video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you had fun watching this vlog. See you guys next time. Bye!